Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7, and we're watching a program called Thank You for Serving. I have Dennis Markey with me. We're doing part two of an exciting adventure of his time in Vietnam. If you remember last time, we're in Vietnam. Dennis is a young captain. He's in charge of an S-2 unit, correct? Uh, the S-2 office uh, of the 12th Combat uh, Aviation Group. And yes. what we found out is we've just had 40-plus rockets shot at him, his unit. Now, as Dennis said, all hell was about to break loose. Take Correct. us from there. Okay. Uh, after the rocket stopped, a, 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 a few minutes went by, and uh, then, uh, then the small arms, machine guns, and, and all so of that. So you're getting ground fire. Oh, we're, it, it is. Fred, it was so loud, I could not talk to you mm. sitting here. People don't realize how noisy oh, it was. Oh, the noise was Popping deafening. M14s, yes. M16s, incoming fire. Incoming round, machine guns. Uh, uh, it's, they deafening. Had, it's deafening. It's deafening. It's deafening, yes. Uh, now, that went on and on and on. Uh, fortunately, we had uh, up the road a second field force. There, there were two or three field forces with a three-star general in command mm -hmm. of the AO, as we talked right. about last time. He, uh, I, I was communicating with his people, and the question was, do you need am ammunition? Yes, sir. Yes, we need ammunition, and we need it as, now. Soon, as soon as you can get it down. Now, could you see the infiltrators? You couldn't no? see anything. Just, saw, just fire. That, that's another thing I wanted to mention. Yep. When I did my 2.30 in the morning check before this mm -hmm. all broke loose, I actually walked out in the road in front of my office. I held my hand up just like this. I could not see it. Fog. Couldn't see it. No. Oh. Just dark. Oh, that dark. There's no it's moon. Dark. Okay. Nothing. Total blackness. Total, complete. I've never seen a night that dark. No stars, no moon. Nothing. No nothing. nothing. In the distance, maybe five, five, eight miles away, there was a, an occasional parachute flare. Now, that was ours. That we, it was, that we, was we, ours. The ones that, that floated down slowly group. and lit yes. up the whole. Okay. Yes, right. so on a parachute. But anyway, this, this gunfire was going on. It was loud. It was continuous. It was uninterrupted. Uh, and all the officers were in Benoit, as I told you. Right. And my colonel called me, the S2. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> and that's exactly what he said. What's going on? At the time, I used my first name, which is John. Right. John, what's going on over there? <laughs> I said, Colonel, I can't even hear. He said, well, just a minute. And there was a window in front of me. Okay. So I took the phone. I held it out the window. To get him the message. And I said, did you hear that? <laughs> That's what's going on. John, you're in trouble. <laughs> and, and, and I knew he wanted to be there. Of course he He did. was gung-ho. He was mm -hmm. an infantry officer. Okay. And uh, I said, the name was Case. Colonel Case, let me tell you, do not come over here. Oh, was that bad? It was, you will never make it. We can't get you in. The gate is locked. We can't get to the gate. Do not come over here. Stay where you here. are and Stay protect where yourself. you are. Wait till daylight. At 3 o'clock in the morning, is it's hard to stay awake. Oh, yeah. Your body is uh, tired. You're, you're you're you can make it to 3, but after that, it's hard. Now, we were up for two days. Mm. We didn't, you know, we're no sleep And these are kids days. who, uh, specialists, yeah. corporals, right. officers tired, everybody's Absolutely. tired. But anyway... Uh, it, it, finally, uh, it finally stopped. Uh, it, day, this, say it started at 3.30 by daylight. About things, three hours later. Yeah, that was quiet. Okay. Daylight, we were able to get a chopper up. Oh, they stopped fire at daylight. Yes, they okay. stopped. The, the fire was over. Uh, we got a chopper up, and they flew over the battle zone and kind of mopped Cleaned up, if up. you will, Cleaned if there was any, any lingering... Uh, uh, enemy soldiers there, they could they take care, care of that. Now, besides uh, the, you described the gentlemen that were killed in the tent by the rockets, did you have any other casualties or wounded? Or well, what? during during all of this, uh, when uh, the fire, there was a lull in the uh, action, uh, I went out and checked uh, my red reaction group, about 10 guys, told them to just hang tight. We didn't know if we needed them because mm. only if they got through the fence were we going to activate our 
uh, re reactionary. Okay, reaction call for the Marines. Yeah. Uh, so I also went over to my office. My office happened to be blacked out. The w okay. They only had one window. So that was and that was, out. that was, you couldn't see through it. And we also was the only office that had sandbags. Oh, protecting it. And the, and the entire uh, group. Oh, Long Bend or whatever. No, the, oh. our, our headquarters, headquarters here. headquarters, okay. Yeah, which wasn't very big, quite frankly. But so that was where we moved the wounded. When I, I didn't know this at the time, but I went over and opened the door. I couldn't get the door open. There's too many, many bodies on the floor. Mm. There were there were bodies. I don't know how many. There weren't uh, maybe ten or twelve. Now these were wounded or killed. These were wounded. They these had wounded. no KIAs. Oh, good, good. These were wounded. The medic was over on the, in the far corner from the door. I couldn't get to him. I couldn't walk so to him because there was too many. Bleeding. You'd be stepping on people to get there. I simply asked him how he was doing. Did he need anything? Did he have what he was anybody dead? No, no, no. I'm fine. Leave me alone. And so let me forth. do my job. Yeah, let, let me, me do, do my, my job. job. I'm gonna. These guys are Fix gonna make up. it. Good, good. So then I went back, uh, further back down the road, past the choppers, to my machine gun position in the far back part of the combat. Okay. Uh, they had not been engaged at all. Had oh, they not, didn't. Had done no firing because they were looking backward at this no man's land. Okay. Well, they so, did not breach it. No, no. There was no one back there. There were three people, a machine gunner, a loader, mm -hmm. and then a the guy with a rifle that yeah. was protecting the two of them, if you will. They were fine. They were awake. They were alert. They knew what was going on. So then I traveled back to the headquarters. Uh, by that time, it was reasonably long. Now, what type of distance are we talking? Yards or half no, a mile? No. Uh, quarter mile? The headquarters w was, uh, was, was, was U-shaped. Okay. Okay, with a road running down the front of it All right. inside the compound. Okay. It was a dirt road, gravel road. And we had the intelligence officers, signal officers, the, the flight surgeon, the S-4, the command building kind so of at the, the bottom of So all the headquarters group was there. Yeah, and yes. then the, the uh, operations and personnel. Okay. In, in, in a U-shape. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was tiny. I mean, but it, you drove around it or walked around? No, it? I, you could walk oh, around you, that oh, in, okay. in, in seconds. That gives us a better feel for the size. Yeah, you it could was walk very, around. Now, then across the street was the mess hall, and then the long buildings for the troops to stay in. That's where okay. they lived. Their dormitories or whatever. Dormitories. Barracks, yeah, barracks, there, yeah. we made of wood and put sure. put up in a hurry. So, but to get to the to the to the aircraft to the helicopters, mm -hmm. and then beyond that to my three guys, I had to walk. Now that was probably. Uh, 200 yards. Okay, ha okay. Tw two football fields. Or yeah, two yeah. football fields to get back to them. And, but it was pitch dark. Now, fortunately, I knew that area like the back of my hand. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't I, see anything. I, I didn't have to. I could do it with my eyes okay. closed. Okay. Uh, and I was walking, and I walked back and, and checked them. And, and so it was a, what, f five minute, 10 Easy minute walk, walk whatever walk. it was, to get back there mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, th th at that time, the daylight, the officers started to infiltrate in. What's going on? Who's yeah. this, that, and the yeah. other, and so forth. So after this was over that day, uh, we interviewed. Uh, we we went across to where the battle, where they were, and there was, you know, there were bodies. There were bodies. Uh, picked up some some uh, of their weapons to to to, to look at them, see what they right, were, and right. so forth. Most of them were Russian AK-47. You were gathering intelligence. Were gathering doing, intelligence. Yeah. And uh, we interviewed uh, a couple POWs, POWs, oh, you got prisoners POWs. of war. Okay. Yeah. The, the, they didn't have any uh, communications. Okay. No radios. No radios. Or no anything. radios. So the word was that this group of about 200 that were across the now, street from say, us. Were they VC or North Vietnamese? Both. Vietnamese regular, oh, both. They were both. 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 Yeah. Across the street from us were going to attack upon the one hundredth rocket that was to hit our location. One hundred. Okay, and you got the forty. I got a forty-three right. and stopped. Mm. There was no more. So, half so of... they didn't know what to do. Mm. And they're stuck. They didn't have communications. Mm. They were waiting for the for other 50 60, more rockets, seven, sixty yeah, rockets. Whatever yeah. it was. Yes. Uh, to come in, then they were to attack. Mm -hmm. Now, why did it stop at forty three? Up flying, circling our area was Snoopy. Oh, okay. So we okay. had the aircraft up. We had Snoopy up, the Magic Dragon. Puff, Puff the, magic the Magic Dragon with dragon. the Gatling gun, yes. That is a C-47. It's a small two-prop plane mm -hmm. 
wonderful. One of the best aerodynamically planes, planes ever, ever designed. Made. It was the plane that the 101st Airborne used to drop behind enemy lines on D-Day. Right. That plane. Excellent aircraft. Air, excellent aircraft. They were flying. Now, they converted, the Air Force converted this, these planes to fire these uh, Gatlin guns. I call them Gatling guns. I yeah, Gatling guns uh, that fired 6,000 oh. rounds a minute. Brutal machine. You, you could, every fifth round was a tracer. You could right. see a tracer. It was, it was, it was lit up. Mm -hmm. Between tracers, there was four other rounds. Right. We could look out and see, couldn't see the plane. But you could see a wall the of fire coming, coming down. down. Yes. Okay. They saw where the rockets were being oh, fired. They might have saved the day. And wiped them out oh, okay. at 43 now, rockets. If I remember, that Gatling gun in an area this big could put, what, you tell me, 50 rounds, 20 rounds? Oh. I mean, it, it just saturated yeah. the area. Uh, it, it did. Uh, 6,000 rounds a minute. Okay. It's uh, a, lot of, a lot of ammunition. It's a lot of, a lot of <laughs> seal coming down from <laughs> yes, that plane. It is. That stopped them from firing any more rockets. Oh, okay. So they didn't get to 100 so because they, they were wiped oh, out. You got lucky on that one. See, that, that saved us. So we like Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was during the, during the night. They flew all night, right. just circling just our area. Just kept going around and shooting. Yeah, kept going just around waiting shooting. for something to happen, for someone to call them and say, do this, fire. do I that, you know, whatever they did. But they, they, they stopped that uh, from happening. Uh, so we, we found a lot of that out from uh, interrogation after okay. things were... And you were doing involved. your job, like you said, getting weapons, yeah. interrogating POWs. Guys, what the heck was going on? Yeah, now I, I can keep going here, and I hope it's not minutiae. No, it's not. No. Uh, Remember, this is oral history that our spouses, yeah. our children, and our grandchildren have no idea. Vietnam, we're talking ancient history here. Yeah, well... I was in the security business. Uh, you, you have confidential, secret, and top secret. Mm -hmm. Well, what a lot of people don't know is top secret is not the highest classification. There's one go. we don't even know about. Yeah. There's one by, above that called top secret code word. Okay. The code words were classified. You had to be cleared above oh, top see, secret okay. to get it. Because I had top secret, but I, I was in a communication center. I yeah. actually would have to leave, even with a top secret, for what you're talking about. The SOIs, whatever those booklets were. Anyway, there is a secret, top secret, and then the next Top step. secret, code word. Code word, okay. S SI, as it was called. But anyway, this information was primarily information collected by NSA. Okay, National Security Agency. National Security Agency. They did their thing, and that, all of that information was top secret, code word. Okay. Not all, but... Most now, were you, did you have that clearance? I did not have oh, that clearance. Have clearance. Okay. To get that clearance, I didn't have it the whole time I was there, but I Later. knew somebody. Oh, you knew somebody. I knew somebody. Okay. The units in Vietnam were called radio, radio, some nebulous name. That's okay. Uh, but they were NSA. Okay. They had a skiff. A uh, 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 SCIF is a sensitive compartmented intelligence facility. All top secret code word is maintained in that SCIF so they were and them. cannot oh. leave that SCIF without going with a person who had the clearance and had a locked black bag mm. in which he carried that information. Mm. So very least, usually it did not, it was not disseminated to anybody. Right, right. Well, but they had really the, the best lot, intelligence. The best intelligence, The best yes, intelligence. So I would go down there. I went down there the next day. And I talked to my guy, and he said, well, let me tell you a few things, this, that, and the other. So he gave me an idea of where things were and what was going to happen and the, the order of battle. I could put on my map where right, these, these right. places, these For things were. For your briefings were. you're talking about. For my okay. briefings. Right. And the colonel would come in every morning, and I would update him on what I knew from what I could find out from various sources. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I didn't have that, in, I had a radio in my office that was connected to all my battalions. So if I had a helicopter up somewhere, he could radio he could me. Could I can see uh, units in in in, uh, in contact and the location and right. that sort of thing, and I could pass that around to other units and so forth. But I've got to tell you about the 
worst moment of my life oh, go ahead. in Vietnam. All right. And this is this the first tour or the second tour? This is the first tour. First tour. Okay. Now, we're not, we, I, I no, it's know okay. What, go ahead. We, get, we can do show three another day, I don't too. want to show three. Yeah, <laughs> these people are getting tired of me. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, but we were flying to one of our battalions was located in Tain In. Now, Tain In is located on what we called the Parrot's Beak. Okay, I know the Parrot's Beak. The Parrot's Beak. Okay. Uh, the Parrot's Beak was a portion of Cambodia, okay. which, like a finger, jutted down into, into Vietnam, Vietnam and separated the Saigon region from the Mekong Delta, right. okay. where I served my second tour in 71, oh, at 70 and 71 in okay. the Delta. Oh, okay. okay. Tain In was located out there. It was jungle from, Saig from Long Bend to Tain In was basically all jungle. jungle. Uh, myself, the headquarters company commander, <clears throat> another captain, and the pilot, co-pilot, and two gunners were, were in, the, in the helicopter. helicopter. We were flying 12, uh, 1,500 feet, something like that. I, could, I always sat in the right-hand uh, seat. <laughs> on top of your helmet or not? <laughs> no, I never sat on my helmet. Okay. I didn't even have a helmet, I don't okay. think. On the right-hand seat, so I could look out and see out, see, and well, I could you, see down. I couldn't see up. No, but you could see down. I could see down. And believe it or not, uh, Fred, I could actually see the artillery rounds going through the air. Be shot at you? Uh, no, oh. through the air okay. to where our infantry was oh, engaged. They, they were fr that was friendly, friendly fire. fire friendly and fire. you could actually see the rounds mm. from up there. Mm, at that height. At that height. Well, that's a safe height in theory. Now well, that's about what we flew yeah. normally. Okay. A normal flight. We could. I would have been up to seven thousand feet, mm -hmm. but that was a just test. Okay. We we, we were. So anyway, you're flying flying to, along, to the jungle. Go to 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 Tainan to do a briefing. What we did not see was the unit in contact down in the jungle. Down there was a clearing, had not only called in artillery, but they had called in air force. Mm -mm. So we got artillery going in. We got planes on the yes. way. Yes. And uh, the Air Force used mainly a F-4 Phantom, right. a big jet. Good jet. Uh, had a lot of ordnance mm -hmm. on it and so mm -hmm. forth. And I've, I know you've seen in movies where uh, these planes, planes will be flying along and they will peel off right. to go and in. Make their run. Make to their make run. their run. All right. Here comes an F-4. Uh-oh. Like this. We're coming this way. <laughs> no. He starts to peel off and we're like right here. Mm. He's peeling off, and he's coming right toward right. us. Mm. I had no idea. Because you can't see I up. I can't see you up. can't see up. Fortunately, the pilot, pilot can it. see up and out. We have big windows in these things. Right. And he saw this. Now, all of a sudden, without warning, our chopper dropped like oh, a he went stone down. He just went down. from the the sky. Get out of the, get out of that area. It just it would just went it didn't, didn't go down you know like you're wasn't graceful. Land, went straight down. Straight down like a rock. I looked at Brownlee. He <laughs> looked at me. Our eyes were this big. Mine were probably bigger than his. And I looked back and all I could see, Fred, was the underneath the belly of that plane that close going by. He must have missed our rotor blade by inches. Mm. Did I he not see? You him. don't think or just. He didn't see you? Or? No, he didn't see. Oh, no, he was making his run. Oh, so he was too busy. He was busy. concentrating okay. on okay. what he was going to do down there that he was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He wasn't worried about us. He so didn't, thank heavens that warrant officer or captain that was flying yep. that helicopter. Dropped us out of the sky. Now, I think about that today. Now, did you hit the, you didn't hit the ground. You we just, didn't hit the ground. I don't know how far we fell. Hundreds of feet or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it was straight, straight down. He then got, got control of the plane, and we got back to back 1,200 uh, feet. And flew on to Tain In. Did you get control of your stomach? Because it had well, obviously just I, dropped. I, 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 yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do at that point. I just sat that? there. You know? <laughs> I, could, well, I couldn't go anywhere. But yeah. uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a an nightmare. adventure. Oh, uh, right. You know, that was the worst, uh, probably the, the, the worst situation that it's I was completely in. Completely out of your control. Completely out of control. You can it do. was worse than Ted of '68. But that was bad enough. Mm. Uh, but this was one where if we had collided. Both of you, all of you would be dead. We, we would all have been in pieces. We'd never no, been found. No. The jungle below us, no. the planes would have been in pieces. No. We would have been in pieces. It would have been over. My father always used to say you'd rather be lucky than good. And there that's a perfect go. example yeah. of that, right? Well, this was divine intervention. Mm. Mm. We, 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 like it never happened. How many, how, 
How did you age that day? Did you go from 30 to 40? I'm not even sure when I got there if I said anything. You know? But <laughs> I found, actually, I found out when I got to the Tain Inn that my, not my next door neighbor, but a neighbor from Front Royal, my age, was a pilot and he was assigned there. To that unit? To that unit. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so we were able to um, meet and talk and commiserate a little bit. And uh, uh, did the jet pilot have any idea? No, we never, ne never, never. In my opinion, he okay. never, he, he just never saw him. No, it was his blind was, spot. As he's, as he's making. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, he was on his side when he came by okay. us. No way he could see it. No visibility. No, 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 no visibility at all. Didn't, and it didn't consider us. Didn't think about us. Didn't see us. His, his mission was to Get put his bombs on the ground. Yeah. at that position right. as soon as he could. Mm. <coughs> so. Uh, have you ever told your wife this story? Does I she, have. Okay, I want to make sure. Sometimes I get phone calls the day after the show's on. Fred, my husband never told me this. Yeah, okay. well, I probably... They, okay. she, I, how about your kids? Children? No, I, I don't think I have okay. any kids. Uh, but uh, that, that was the worst, worst moment. Oh, I bet of, it was. Uh, now, now I, I've been mortared. Mm -hmm. I've been rocketed. Right. I, I, I've been shot through my bedroom window. Uh, N not hit, but I mean, uh, we had rounds coming through the rounds window. Rounds coming through the window at night. Uh, uh, we've been, we've had sappers come into our area. Got on the base. Uh, on the base, they'd always come to a large area because uh, they could get through the wall easy enough because it wasn't continuous right. troops to, to right. guard right. the perimeter. So big, it was so big, yeah. Yeah, so they would put their sat to bring their satchel in, blow up a, a club or something, you right. know, and kill whomever they could. Uh, so uh, there, there was any, any number of ways that they could get to you if they oh, wanted to. It was, I, I thought the worst thing I ever experienced, and this is feeding in what you said, when they walked the rockets in and mortars in, mm -hmm. we were in sandbag, you know, we were in the sandbag area, and they'd get closer, you know, they just literally walked them in, right? Yeah. 100 yards away, 50, my, my measurements might you. be all wrong, but they just, and you, and you, yeah. you just go in there completely out of my control. I have no control. Totally. No it's control. all luck. See, we had no sandbags. Okay. We, we had no bunkers. So you had we nothing had, to nothing. protect There was nowhere to go. Hmm. We didn't have anything. We, you, I just hit the deck, uh, rolled off my cot on the floor, and uh, waited. Cross your fingers. You, you now, I hate to ask you, any more excitement on the first tour? I mean, you couldn't get more exciting to, than what you've experienced uh, so far. Well, you know, you can, you, you can, I'll tell you some excitement. Please. In our bunk, I was on the first floor. Okay. With two, was two of us in the room. You have officers, BOQ. Two officers in the, in the room. This was in Benoit when Benoit. we first were okay. down there. This is just a quick story. No, plenty of time. Uh, <clears throat> we slept with the wind. It was so hot. Mm. You could not put a sheet on. You'd Too sweat. hot. You'd sweat. You'd sweat. Yeah. You'd, you'd be soaked in two minutes. The mosquitoes were by the millions. Oh, it was brutal. Have you ever seen as many as mosquitoes in Mos your life? Mosquitoes and rats. I don't even want to go into well, it. I never yeah. saw a rat. No, a play coup we had in... A, a no, there were no rats there, but the mosquitoes. So I'd lay on my bunk and I had enough light. I could look up to the ceiling and watch the geckos swarming across the, the, the ceiling mm -hmm. eating the mosquitoes. Mm. Oh, I was there. They were having a feast. They were having, having a feast. There. So I love the geckos. Okay. So, But anyway, just wanted to interject that. No, I went on to... July of 68 and returned. I had one R&R &R there, uh, flew to Hong Kong. Where'd you go? Oh, you went to Hong Kong. Went to Hong Kong. Okay. We, had, uh, we had Hong Kong. Uh, I went to Australia. I uh, went to Sydney. Australia, Sydney. We had uh, four or five sites you yes, could go you to. Could, sure. I just chose Hong Kong. I, I don't know why I did. Um, With enlisted guys, it was luck of the draw. You, you had your three choices. You just were thankful you got something. Yeah, right, yeah. we had Singapore in there. I think right. we had Bangkok. I'm not right. sure. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to go to Hong Kong, so... Uh, Why not? Why not? I, I, yes. what we, did. we stayed at the Peninsula Hotel. You had a good time in Arnor. Had a good time. Excellent. The Peninsula is still there. I've been back to Hong Kong. Oh, great. Uh, the hotel is still there. We went to the China Fleet Store. Oh, you went... And yeah, when yeah. we were there, the Navy was there on their... They, they, they were sailing around the Pacific. And they were there in the in Hong Kong Bay, okay. and the white the, the city had turned white. Every sailor every got sailor off the ship. Every sailor on every ship was in Hong Kong. <laughs> Having or, a good time. Now Hong Kong is an island. Yes. You got Hong Kong Bay, and then you've got Kowloon, which is which was sealed off from the rest of China. Okay. And it was British controlled. 
They took us out to, the, uh, to a listing post where you could see down to the fence, the Chinese guards, the gateway, all that sort of thing. Anyway, we won't, we won't do that. Um, I'm but sure it was a good, oh, I know it was a good experience. It was a good experience. I mean, did you have a suit made in Hong Kong? I had two suits. Oh, I mean, that was the best And a thing. pair of golf shoes. And a pair of golf shoes. I couldn't, I couldn't, I had to have that. Anyway. That was the best duty, remember, from the best duty in the world, when I landed in Sydney, the Navy ran the R&R. &R oh, did they? For, the, for, the, for, the, for the, all the branches, and you couldn't wear military clothes, which we landed in, so that you'd rent clothes, but it was a wonderful week, like I'm sure you yeah, had. Yeah, it right? was delightful. So you had the R&R &R in Hong Kong. R&R in Hong Kong, and then in July of 68, uh, came, came home. Okay. I had, I had the two tours. So I made two trips over. I'd say the trips lasted 18 hours to get over there. It was quite a flight. It was a good flight. flight. Then I, on my second tour, I had to come back to Washington to do at the Military Personnel Center, do some personal things and saw the wife and that sort of thing. So I made three flights, complete flights, from Washington mm. to Benoit, 18 mm. hours each way. And they wore you out. And it was, uh, you just sat there for 18 hours. And we didn't drink any, you know, with no, no drinks or anything like that. You're just sitting there. Mm, we got plenty of meals. Yeah. They, the, the, the flight attendants they fed took you great a lot. care yes, of us. They did. There were 17 flight attendants on our on our flight. Well, 300 men. Then you say 300 so, persons. Uh, that's upwards of three. Yeah. And that's one a flight. Lot, that's a lot three. of work. That's a lot of work. Let me just, Dennis, interject. Germany, Vietnam. Was there a duty station in your whole career that was just like outstanding? You know, where you, you and your wife maybe were together. Did you have one post that you really enjoyed yes. in your career? Oh, what was that? Yeah. My favorite job was being, uh, I could, uh, we don't have enough time. but That's okay. We've got two minutes, so we can go a long ways in two and, minutes. And it's over in 30. We're that over. was 30. I, I told you this is the craziest 30 well, minutes. Well, let's, I won't, go, in, you want. I won't you go into that because that's another story altogether. Sure. My best job was as a special security officer. Okay. Doing back channel ma uh, mail uh, communications from general to general. Oh wow! And I care the highest level. Yes, communication. the highest level you can get. So I knew what was going on. Had some interesting things occur there. Now where but was that? That was in Germany. Oh, oh in it, was Germany. In, it was in Germany, Frankfurt, and and. Now were you? This is when you were lieutenant, or you? But then you were a major. Uh, or I was or a major. Major then. Oh, major. Okay. I was. Pro let's get to the Delta. Sure. My second tour, I went in November of 70, 70, 70. and landed in. It, in Saigon, where our headquarters was, the right. 525 MI Group. Okay. I was as further assigned to the Mekong Delta as the commander of a clandestine mm. intelligence collection oh, wow. unit. That would have been interesting. Yeah, and and, and I can't go too no, much no, further no, with no, that. No, not get you in trouble. Uh, but I was actually I was a captain then, but I was okay. on the majors list. All right. And on the way down, I was flying in a C-47. The only one in there. There was an Army Times. In the seat beside him, mm -hmm. oh, I'll read the Army Times. Which was the daily newspaper. Daily first. newspaper. Yes. I looked at. I knew I was on the major's list. Looked in there, and two weeks prior to this, you were promoted. I had been promoted to major. <laughs> you didn't no know. No one know me. I didn't know <laughs> that. So I took the paper to my S one when I got down there. I said, "Look, I've been a major for two weeks. How come you, you owe didn't me back know? pay? You owe me back pay." Yeah. So anyway, he went back to Washington, got the orders, got promoted. So I was promoted by a Vietnamese. Colonel, You're kidding me. because my unit was instructing his unit on how to do operate to clandestine intelligence, intelligence okay. collection. <laughs> Never dull. Thank you, newspaper. Thank you, Army Thank Times. You, or whatever. The, 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 the Star, Stars, and Stars and Stripes, and Stripes Stars which is my stripes. favorite newspaper yeah. for about 30 months, That's right. right? which was great. I, I didn't mean to take up 30 minutes for no, that. No, no. I, I could, Dennis, you know, what is the most... When you get into this, you could... Oh, we go you, forever. There's a thousand stories Dennis, we the Naked City. Oh, well, what's amazing... I say almost 3,500 veterans, all of whom are equal to a book, hours of oral history, because this is something that we've lost, basically, the World War II generation. The yeah. Korean generation is... And we're getting old. We're getting to the point, as yeah. we know on Mondays, when we look around, there's more gray hair and yes, no hair there than there is brown hair yeah. and black hair. So this is really important. Well, in the future, not today, we'll get you back. Oh, gosh. Dennis, thank you again for your service. Absolutely. Okay? Thank and you, And thank Fred. you for appearing on this show. Yeah. My name's Fred McNeil. Thanks again for watching QAC TV7. Dennis has taken us through the interesting history of our efforts in Vietnam. Whether you agreed or disagreed to the war, the warriors will be honored and respected. So on behalf of Dennis and I, our time is up. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. And thank you to all the veterans in the audience. Good night.